Good evening. Good evening. And this evening we have the second installment of our five-part series on the sensations of Christmas. In a year of sensory deprivation, isolation, and loneliness, we meditate on how our God has come into our world to heal our separation. Come, O dayspring from on high, the sights of Christmas. We begin then, well, actually, we welcome all those who are worshiping with us by live streaming. Don't want to forget you. Um, we are glad that we are able to have this connection in such a strange year. We begin our service with hymn number 352, let the earth now praise the Lord. We sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. rise to hear the words of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Psalm 96, Selected Verses. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell, Tell of his, his salvation name. from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the peoples. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness. 
and the peoples in his faithfulness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to The Old Testament reading from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 14. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north, and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The Old Testament reading from Exodus, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name name by by which which he will will be be called. called. The Lord Lord is our our righteousness. The epistle is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, A veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to 
the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 19 through 23. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken By the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. You may be seated. We continue with hymn number 389. Let all together praise our God. We sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon will be, well, a number of the passages we read. We start out in Genesis 28, verse, small numbers, verse 12. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold... The angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. This is the text. The visions of Christmas from Bethel to Bethlehem. For many years, I went on vacation for one week in the state of Iowa, and I rode my bicycle across Iowa, taking part in a in a little tour called Ragbri, standing for the Des Moines Register's annual great bicycle ride across Iowa. Ten to fifteen thousand riders, streets were crowded, and as you rode along between towns, there were days that it got very hot on the road. Remember a few of them where the pavement got soft. 
or you had headwinds some days, and those were the days that turned very slow. And as they turned into very slow days, you looked ahead. You know, at the first sight of a town that you're coming into out in western Iowa usually is. It's either the water tower or the church steeple. I know this from experience. And as you see these things, you're saying to yourself, just a little bit further. And you watch as they slowly and slowly and slowly get closer. And you're thinking, I've got some refreshments and maybe a little rest up ahead. Every so often the route turns and you head off and you watch the <laughs> town receding. It's anticipation. And that comes through the vision and the sight of something. And so with religion, we need to see. We desire to see. And I have heard this through the years I don't know how many times. If only I could hear the voice of God just once. If only I could see an angel just once. Then I wouldn't have any, any of the doubts anymore. But the separation of sin closes us off. We are sinful and God is holy. So much so that the understanding in the Old Testament was that no one can see God and live. And yet we desire to see. We need to see. And Moses at one point cried out to God, let me see your face. And the prophet Isaiah cries out, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. In part, that's why we began this series with the sounds of Christmas. Because we need for God first to give us his words and promises. And that's how he begins to come into the world. But God does reveal himself. He does not leave us without sight. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That's in John chapter 9 as he finished healing the man born blind. And the Gospel of John begins with the first few verses reading in part, In him was life, and that life was the light of the world. We need to see. So Jacob has a dream, a ladder or a staircase, going up to heaven. Or is it coming down from heaven to earth? A nice thing about the Hebrew language is that in that language, almost any word can indicate direction. We have something that is earthward. This is not the place where Jacob is able to ascend into heaven, but where God steps down into Jacob's life. Angels were going up and down on it to, well, we are told by the scholars it means to appear before God and receive their instructions and then go down to do them. And picking up on the story, Jesus said to Nathanael, I say to you, you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. He is in himself the kingdom of God coming into our world. And then, then in the second of the Old Testament lessons, Moses turns aside to see the burning bush. I will turn aside to see this great sight. And Moses is then confronted by God. And yet it is not Moses 
turning aside and seeking out God. Oh, he'd done the seeking out of God. He'd failed at that, and he had to leave Egypt, and he'd been out in the wilderness for 40 years watching over his father-in-law's sheep. But the verses that come after the reading that we did, they have God saying, I have surely seen, and I have heard, and I have come down. And that's how it starts, with God saying, I have seen. See, the Christian faith is different. We keep running into God who is busy stepping into our world, interrupting the flow and demanding our attention. He will have all the world sit up and take notice and look toward Bethlehem this month. And no matter how hard humanity tries to, it cannot ignore God coming into our world. This is the theme of Christmas, a glorious interruption of all of human history and of each one of our lives. So much that history is divided into by Jesus. We measure our years from his birth, and people who want nothing to do with God will still celebrate the birthday of Jesus. He's done a good job of interrupting, hasn't he? We keep running into him all through the books of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. And you have to work very hard and stubbornly to not see God confronting us in our lives. And as he does, what are the sights of Christmas? A dream for Joseph who was in the middle of doubting Mary. And when he awoke, he did as the angel had commanded. Angel choirs appearing to shepherds and then shepherds making their appearance at the manger. And most of all, God himself appearing in the world in the most unexpected way. No power or judgment, no rending of the heavens and visions of glory, only tiny hands and being wrapped up to keep him warm, having to be fed and diapered even. And it's like God says to all of humanity, gotcha. You didn't see that coming. But here is my son, completely human, completely tiny, completely helpless. And all of your planned and thought-out religious piety and doings, all of your own finding God and figuring out eternity and earning life, they don't make it. Now set them all aside and watch how I do religion. And then Jesus begins to heal the sick, feed the hungry. Then he goes to the cross and takes the nails for you and gives forgiveness. We are pretty set in seeing what we expect to see, aren't we? When the sight is not as we expected, we're like oh, the women on Easter, completely confused, or even worse, like Thomas refusing to believe, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails. It's the theme of seeing again. And when it finally sinks in, 
we are astonished and in awe. The fact of the matter is, we are still astonished and in awe. And that's a good place to be. It fits in with the pattern of grace, of God's kingdom coming completely by his working, not ours, and of being simply the receivers of an amazing work of salvation. And it is John, the Apostle John, who says in his first letter, that which was from the beginning, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked on. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. Two thousand years later, We're still astonished. We still marvel at Christmas and at the birth of Jesus. And we still wonder at the grace and the love of God that has come to us. This season is special because it brings together so much of how God interrupts in such a glorious way. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue by singing hymn number 933, my soul rejoices. My soul rejoices, my spirit voices, sing the greatness of the Lord. For God my Savior has shown me Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. 
come, Lord Jesus, day spring from on high. Open our eyes to the things of heaven, that where we walk through a world of darkness, we may find in you our light of salvation. And as you have torn asunder the veil that separates earth and heaven, we may one day be carried to your Father's house and see not only angel choirs, but the very face of you, our blessed Redeemer. Amen. We ask you, dear Savior, to watch over the many who are ill this evening. As a plague continues to work its way through the entire earth. Look with mercy upon your people. Look with mercy on all humanity. Lift off of us the righteous judgment of our sins and put in its place the grace and mercy that comes from knowing you as the Savior of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Watch over our doctors, nurses, and all who minister to the ill. Guard and protect them. Protect their health. Protect them deep inside, emotionally, psychologically, Enable them to continue, to continue to work with hope and with the knowledge that you are by their side and you are watching over them. Protect them that they may be kept safe from this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank and praise you for the many who worked to provide cures and healings, treatments and therapeutics. We ask for your blessing on all that has been done. You are the Lord. You are the giver of all good things. Restore to us the days that seem to be slipping away from so many of your people. Lengthen our days that we may, through all of our days, praise you, worship you, and thank you for your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our final hymn is number 393, Infant Holy infant lowly.
And so we conclude with the sights of Christmas. We continue on next week in the experiences of Christmas with the weariness of Christmas. And if you're not quite sure what that means, I'll give you another week of preparing. <laughs> Decorating, fixing, buying, wrapping, food and plans and everything else. And by that time next week, you should know. Um, we also broadcast on Sunday mornings. We begin at 8.15, and that is live streamed as well. For those of you who have joined us by live streaming, we're glad that you could make it for this hour, and we bid you peace.